Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. But if you're new here, my name is Carla. I've lost a whole heap of weight and I talk about showing up for yourself. As I said, I've lost a whole load of weight if you've never been with me before. I used to be 323.8 pounds and I now live very comfortably in the mid 140s. I have been maintaining now for the last six months, give or take. Uh, five months, six months, something like that. Um, but I was also maintaining prior. I had a baby boy in the middle of that and you know, things happen. I'll leave my full weight loss journey linked up here if you guys would like to check that out. But today we're gonna to be talking about something very, very, very specific in terms of weight loss. And actually you could probably apply it to many things in life. We're talking about the middle, the long road to the middle or the long road that is the middle. Guys, I feel you. If you are in the middle now, the middle of your weight loss, and you are on the struggle bus, I feel you, I hear you, I see you. Because I was there, I know what that middle feels like. What do I mean by the middle? So let's take your weight loss journey. I'm gonna use myself as an example because that's what, that's what I have to work with. And I'm gonna give you a timeline. So let's say, this is 323.8 pounds and this is my goal weight. And in between, there's 180 pounds that needs to be lost. And I use the term needs like loosely, you know, like a pinch of salt. So 323, something in and around the 140s. And we need to get all the way to here. But we start off and we're like, yeah, we're motivated, we're gung-ho, the results, the big, big drops are coming, you know, you lose something the first week, like I lost eight pounds the first week, I'm like, yeah, 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 and I was like, we're gonna lose three stone and like 42 pounds in the first 10 weeks, I'm like, yeah, I got this, I got, lady, I got this, dudes, I've got this, I am, I am, I'm here, I, I don't even, don't worry about me, I've got this. And then, you know, for me, I was doing body slims. So I did, you know, the first 10 weeks you do, I lost 42 pounds. Then I lost another 14 pounds before the second cycle happened. So what are we at, 56 pounds? And in and around, somewhere around the 60 pound weight loss, the middle started. The middle of weight loss began for me. That's the middle bit. And if you're doing body slims, it's probably when you're in the second week of your second cycle. And it doesn't matter how much you've got to lose. Obviously I'm using myself as an extreme example being like, you know, having to lose 180 pounds, but whether it's 20 pounds, whether it's 40 pounds, whatever your part is, there is a, a bit of the start where your motivation is high, you're feeling really good, you're feeling gung-ho, you might not be getting every week the results you want, but you've got the, the methodology right, things are going well, things are happening. And then it just starts to become a bit tedious and a bit tiring. Now I've lost weight a number of times in my life, um, none of them successfully for a long time. And I never got to this, I never got to this state of great, uh, which is a whole other conversation. And the reason that I never got to great is because of the bloody middle. Because the middle's a bitch, guys. The middle of weight loss is a freaking bitch. And the reason that she's a bitch, or he, is because it's the longest part. So you've got your nice start motivator bit where you're feeling really good, and then it just starts to get tedious. And you've got a long way to go till the end, which is your last 10 pounds, last 14 pounds, last five pounds, whatever it is for you, depending on the ratio of how much you have to lose. And you've got this huge chunk in the middle. So you've got start, end, and all this middle, this middle bit where you just have to keep going. And what I'm gonna to talk to you about today are a couple of things that helped me to get through the middle, that helped me to get to where I needed to be. Because you need to get through this bit, and because it's this bit that I failed on every time before, that I stopped, that I quit on every single time before. For no numerous reasons, be it mental health reasons, be it not understanding, be it, you know, that I just got bored, be it that I was an enthusiastic starter, and then like, was like, well, this is not, well, I'm not this is not happening fast enough for me, so I'm out of here. Whatever it is, there's some part in the middle that I, I just, 
that's when I threw in the towel. And I think that was about three or four times that I did that. You know, with real, like I would lose like 30, 40 pounds and then I would, I'd give up, I would quit. And I would end up quitting and then putting more weight back on again. So by the time that I got to January, 2020, when I began this weight loss journey, I ended up having to lose 180 pounds. That was how much I had to lose because I kept quit, put more, put the weight back on again, then some, start, start the cycle again, lose 20, 30 pounds, quit, have, end up putting more weight back on again. It just kept like compounding the interest, but in the wrong way. You want to compound the interest in the weight loss way. So you got the middle bit, and then what will happen is if you get past that middle bit, you will get to good. Then we will get to great, and great is the most permanent state. That is where we want to be. But in order to get to great, and then you get to maintenance, and then you never have to lose weight again, we need to get through the middle. And that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about. A couple of things that helped me to realize what the middle was and what I needed to do to get through the middle. And to be honest with you, the middle kind of counts for anything, any journey that you're on, whether it be weight loss, starting a business, you know, growing a YouTube channel, whatever it is, there is a big slog in the middle. And then things will start to work because when you put in that work consistently, eventually you will get the results that you want. So let's have a conversation. The first thing that I needed to realize and that I that really helped me is to understand that weight loss is a finite state. Weight loss is not supposed to be forever. You are not supposed to be losing weight for your entire life. Weight loss is supposed to be a time where you have a smaller number of calories you eat within a specific calorie deficit. Again, I don't discuss my calories. You can figure out what yours is with the TDEE or you can do Body Slims or some other program. But that is a short amount of time you do that and you don't let the, I have to live a little, that kind of crap come in. If you can commit to this as a short amount of time, and you know that if you do that work for that short amount of time, you will get there. You will get there because it's, it's the consistent basis of doing that amount because the results can't help themselves. If it's scientific fact, if you eat less with calorie, within a calorie deficit, eventually you're going to get there. So you have to do all your things to help you get into that calorie deficit. But the most important thing is to remember that this is a finite state. The majority of us, I would wager a bet, that the majority of us in our lives have been living in a constant state, thinking that we're in weight loss, but we're actually in weight maintenance. So kind of cycling between five pounds or 10 pounds. Or for me, I was cycling up and up and up, but we're kind of cycling in within the same amount of weight you know, both constantly thinking we're on some kind of diet, but never committing our full selves to that diet. So if you got through the first part, your initial part of weight loss, so your first, the start bit, that is fantastic. And now what we need to do is continue the actions that you did that got you to that weight loss, no matter what program it is or what way you're doing it. If you can continue on that way, and remember that keep by keeping going that this is a short amount of time. So knowing in my mind that this is a short amount of time made it the need to do those actions more palatable and that I wasn't so stressed about the idea of this is going to be for my entire life because it's not for your entire life. I am living, walking, breathing proof that weight loss, when you do it as a finite burst of time, that eventually you can change into maintenance, you get to great, you change into maintenance and you live that state then for the rest of your life. Because that's what I'm doing. And I have no fear that I'm gonna put weight back on again. So knowing that it is just for a short amount of time, if you commit to that for that short amount of time. Now, obviously there are times when things will happen and you'll have to go out for dinner with friends and that kind of thing. But you don't have to drink at those times. You don't have to. You might choose to, but you don't have to. You don't have to overeat. You might choose to, but you don't have to. You don't have to eat anything. You know, it might be a bit awkward if you sit there and everyone's eating and you're not, but you also don't have to eat. That is my kind of big tip, big brain part number one is to remember that this is a finite state and that it's not going to last forever. Number two is you need to remind yourself of why you're doing it. 
what is the reason that you have chosen to go on this path? Because you will forget along the way. You will forget what it is. What was that feeling that you wanted to achieve? What were you feeling when you decided to lose weight? What is it? You know, we lose 20, 30 pounds and if you got nearly 200 pounds to lose, it, it's not enough, you know, but you know, kind of going, well, I've lost that bit, so that's, that's okay. You know, that's an all right amount. But you need something to drive you through that middle part, your why. And what I would recommend to everybody is to grab a piece of paper, grab a notebook and write down your whys. Because when you write something down, there is a magic that happens with pen to paper. It's your brain, it, it, it slows your brain down so that you have to actually think about what you're putting down onto the paper. And if you're not sure of your why, then brainstorm, sit down and write at the top, I want to achieve my goal weight because this is how I'm going to feel at the end of it. Because I want to be able to fit into that. Because I don't want this to happen to me again. Because I, whatever it is, and all of the reasons, write them all down. Because it's remembering those reasons as to why you want to do it, the power of why. Why you are doing the actions, why you're waking up to go for a walk in the morning, why you're not going out with your friends, why you're not ordering that takeaway. And every time you have a decision to make, then back to that, as I was saying earlier about those decisions, you are reminding yourself why. So I am going to make the decision that I'm going to drive into town to go for my girls night out. And the reason that I'm going to drive is that it'll stop me from drinking. And the reason that I don't want to drink is because I want to achieve my goal weight and that will take me further away from my goal weight. And what, why do I want to achieve my goal weight? I want to achieve my goal weight so that it can increase my chances of conceiving a child. That was a thought process that went down for me. When I had 180 pounds to lose, when I had decided that was give or take, I think it was my first decision was 160 something pounds. Yeah, 160 pounds that I wanted to lose was my, my origin, was to get me to half of Carla, it was 165 pounds. And I'd gone through some amount and I remember losing one pound one day and thinking, oh my God, if I have to, if I can only lose one pound a week, it's gonna take me however many weeks. This is not going to work for me. Screw this, to hell with this, I'm done, I quit. And that's when goal breakdown came in for me. And that's my kind of tip number three is goal breakdown. I'll leave my video here on the full how I did my goal breakdown. Very, very specific, but basically it's reducing your entire, like the entire timeline of weight loss or the entire line of weight loss, the path of weight loss into very small chunks. So it's taking it from seeming like this giant hill that you're gonna to have to climb into very, very small pieces. And that really helped me, that changed it. So instead of thinking, okay, I have to get to 10 stone, I was only ever thinking of the next little bit the next tiny segment that I had to lose. I never thought about the full thing. I just thought about that little one to the next one. And by doing that, it helped me to just focus, focus all my energy on the next little goal and then reward myself when I reach that goal. And that is the key to it, is to reward yourself when you reach each goal. I'll leave that video up here, but that, that helped me with the middle so much. And especially because some of those goals were really, really big goals. Getting into Wonderland. Wonderland happens in the middle for most people. Like it doesn't happen at the start. For the Number four, stop comparing yourself to others. I had to stop comparing my weight loss to other people. There were two big comparisons that I, were, I was making. They were to other people who were on social media with me who were losing weight at the same time and there were also people like Jordan Shrinks who had lost weight beforehand and I told you if you've seen my me talk about this really toxic thing that I did when I basically wrote down every single one of Jordan's uh, weight losses for a certain number of months uh, for the whole journey 
and that I was like, well, it's her week two, she lost this, and her week seven, she lost this, and her week 15, she lost this, and I only lost this. Yeah, the comparison, the comparison trap is toxic, absolutely toxic. We are all beings made up completely differently. You cannot say that you're going to lose. Like if you and Margaret did exactly the same thing for a week, your bi biological composition and Margaret's biological composition are two completely different. We all ate exactly the same thing and did exactly the same movements in exactly the same time. Each day for a week, our results would be different because we're all different. So comparing yourself to somebody else is absolutely, it's useless. Also, comparing your day 30 to somebody's day 60 or day 50 or day 300 or day one. This is something that's actually, I want to talk, chat about as well in, in with comparison. If you're on day 60 of your weight loss or your day 200 or whatever it is, and you see somebody day one or their week one losing eight pounds and you've lost one or something like that, you know, and you're having a bit of an SHIT fit, you have to have a chat with yourself because you're in completely different times. You will lose when probably you lost weight at the same rate or similar rate, or, you know, you lost more that was suitable for you or relevant for you at the start. In the same vein, guys, it's really important to remember that you cannot control the output or the outcome. The only thing that you can control is the input. You cannot control the outcome or the output, the only thing you can control is the input. You can control the numbers that come out, you can only control the numbers that you put in. What you can control, the calories that you eat, the amount of time you go walking, the number of liters of water that you drink, the number of hours that you're sleeping, they are things that you can control the input of, input into your weight loss. You can control how often you're tracking, whether you're tracking well. You can control what time you're going to sleep. These are all things that you can control. And I know people will say that I can control it. Yes, you can. We, we can control these things. So reminding yourself that the only thing that you can control is your inputs is so, so important. And again, on the same vein, to my next tip, Let's remember that in controlling your input, it's not about motivation, it's about consistency. Consistency is the key to doing this. It's about getting it right. As we were talking about, you know, earlier that this is seven days, weight loss is seven days for a finite amount of time. Being consistent is what will get you home. The motivation lags in the middle. That is the big, big issue is that it will lag in the middle. The motivation just is like, oh God, I don't want to do this. But that is where your best friend of consistency will pick up. And a lot of people ask me, how did I stay consistent? And I have a video on that, but there is, there's something I've heard since then that's really kind of resonated with me. I think what happened to me at the start is that I understood that these are the actions that work in order for me to lose weight. And if I want to lose weight, then I need to keep doing these actions. Now I know that I have to go to a job, or my job's a bit different now, but say prior to this being my job, I knew that I had to go to an office every single day at eight o'clock, no matter whether I wanted to or not. I had to work for eight hours and then I had to come home and I had to cook dinner and I had to do the groceries and I had to do all these things. Now, I made a choice to do those. Yes, I might have chosen not to and that would have ended up in you know ramifications of having no money or having no food in the house or I didn't pay my taxes. But that was a choice. It was my choice to do that. I knew that it was important and that is the same thing here, is that I realized that these actions that I had to do, while I might not have the motivation, because I can tell you in that job that I had, I was not motivated to go there 99.9% .9 of the time, but I still went because I knew I had to do it. And it's the same for this. I realized that I had to do it. I had to do, I had to get up every morning and do my walk. I had to eat within a certain calorie limit. I had to drink enough water. I had to go to sleep. 
If I wanted those results, these are things I had to do and I had to do them consistently. Like you have to go to work consistently, you have to do it consistently. And by doing it consistently, and by just giving in and not fighting it, and because reminding myself this is only a finite amount of time and by doing these actions, I will get there, it brought me home. It drove me home. I got there. And that's how. It's by reminding myself that it's not about motivation. And when the motivation wanes, and the motivation will pick back up again. It honestly does. The motivation will pick back up again. Because you'll be ended up being motivated by your own results. And then it'll dip. And then you'll get motivated again. But the consistency is what will pick you up from that point. And that is what is so important is that that consistency bit. As well, if you're finding that you're struggling in that middle part, it is really good to look for inspiration. Now, there is a big difference between inspiration and comparison. If you are looking at somebody and they make you feel expansive, if they make you feel like, wow, I would really love to do that. You know, they're really cool. Like I, I see what they're doing and I like that. That's, that's making you feel expansive. That's an inspiration. If you're looking at somebody and they're making you feel small, they're making you feel like, I don't have this. I can't do that because of that. I, they have that. They have it so easy. That's not a person to inspire you. Unfollow them. Stop conversing. Stop consuming that. That's really important. But if you find somebody that is inspiring to you, that is leading you on, Hopefully I am one of those people, you know, that is, and there are people that I know that, uh, that don't feel good watching me. And I've met some in, pe in person who have said to me, I had to unfollow you and I get it. I understand. I will take no offense. But if I am one of those people, unfollow me. If it's somebody else, unfollow them, you know, until you're ready. Maybe they, something might change. You might go back to them in the future. And I found, I found a couple of people recently that I was like, oh God, yeah, I had to unfollow them. You know, two more things, two more things that really helped me. One is routine. Picking up a routine and getting a routine helped me drive me through that middle and helped me to stay consistent. So as you can see, these are all, these all have themes. So it kind of took the thought process out of it. I had a routine and I still have that routine. I wake up between five and half five. I go out for my walk, come back, drink my water, have my shower. I now film, get ready with me, TikTok every single morning. I do you know like I then go downstairs and make coffee I'm taking care of my son depends whether I have childcare or not and of course my routine changes and that's okay when your routine when you need your routine to change change it but I know that no matter what I am up at five o'clock in the morning and I am out walking with my son with without my son by myself and I these things change like that is that's a constant for me and then what happens then afterwards is something that I have to adapt to. I'm also very routine based with my food, with meal planning and with shopping for food. And my, if you see in my video of like how I meal plan and think you'll see that it's like, I'm not one of those like that girls on, you know, on social media. I am a hot mess. There is crap, there's big piles of hair in this corner. You know, like there's, we're not, we don't have our shit together all the time, but we try to in terms of a general routine. I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just trying to have a decent routine. So that is something that really, really helped me is having that routine. So say for example, like the days that I have Brannock the whole day to myself, I have a certain routine for that. The days that I have childcare for Brannock, I have a routine for that. The days that, you know, those sporadic days where I'm like, I need to get all of this work done and I have Brannock and I need to figure something out, I'm still up at five o'clock in the morning. I, you know, like there are many times where I've had to go like and do photo shoots and like other things or interviews or something like that at like seven, eight o'clock in the morning. I'm still up at five o'clock. If I have to wake up earlier, then I know that that's a routine for that day. My final thing is it's okay to feel upset. I want you guys to know that it is okay to feel your emotions. If it's around the, the scales, if it's around your loss, if it's around something that's coming up during your journey, whatever you're feeling, it's okay and it's valid. I'm gonna insert a little footage here from me from, I think I was halfway through, I was about 70 pound loss, I think. So I'll leave a little footage here and this is, I have been on a mental health journey for a long time, um, for the guts of 10 years, and it really culminated in the last year. 
and I've had a kind of realization about myself and I've talked about it, with it in the past um on in previous posts but I've done an awful 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 lot of work on myself since last since June July 2019 uh it's now June oh wow it's June 2020 so it's nearly a year in the last two weeks uh I've been having a really 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 tough time and I it was triggered by a therapy session that revealed an awful lot of pain that I was dealing with what happened was that the basically the traumatized child in me became the dominant voice again and for the last two weeks I've been a bit of a nightmare to, to live with I've been argumentative I've been like a petulant child really I have allowed my child to take over again and I thought that I was losing the person I had become and I realized then tonight it was like or today no this is the child this is this is your traumatized child um just needing comfort and needing attention and needing to know that it's okay and the adult is is going to tell her that it's okay and that things are are okay and I'm grounding myself again I had a really nice bath I had a shower and I really just wanted to ground myself in into where I am in my life now and I just wanted to come on and you know say to anybody if you know if they're having if they've been kind of going on a good path and there there's a a trough or a, a ditch that they fall into you know you can get back out of it um ground yourself do whatever your coping mechanisms are here and this is about me feeling my feelings and allowing myself to feel my feelings, something that I never did before. And that helped me to drive me home because if I didn't feel my feelings, I needed to cope with them. And my methodology of coping with them was with food. And by allowing myself to feel my feelings, my feelings associated with the scales, my feelings associated with massive trauma that was coming up within me, no matter what it was, I allowed myself to feel my feelings and that I recognize that my feelings were valid and treat myself with compassion and with kindness. I'll leave down in the description box below a couple of love and kindness meditations that I highly recommend that really, really helped me when I was feeling really crap about myself. But by treating myself with that kindness and with that love and with that compassion, allowing myself to feel my feelings and process them, that really helped me in order to grow to process, to evaluate, and to see how I can deal with these things as we go into the future. And by doing that, that is how I got through the middle part. Because the motivation to shut out the feelings and not reach for food had waned. So sometimes I would have to literally sit there and process those feelings and sit in that dark place for a moment, maybe with the support of a loving partner or somebody in your a friend, maybe with the support of a professional, Feel those feelings, allow yourself to feel them. And if it's to do with the scales, that's okay. We're all we're all allowed to throw our toys out of the pram and throw the baby out of the bathwater and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is to not allow that to take you off the path, this path of the middle that will bring you home, that will bring you to that feeling of good. And by getting to that feeling of good, you can get to great. And great is the most permanent state of being. That is the state that I got to state that I want to stay in for the rest of my life and I know that there's nothing that will take me away from this in relation to food or any of my previous bad habits. By staying in that I get to live my life now free. I get to live this life in maintenance that's free and say I never have to lose weight again. I never have to lose weight again. It's amazing. It's so freeing and that's what I want for you guys if you're in that. Guys, this is the end. This is the end part of this video. We've had the start. We've had a long middle together. And now this is the end of the video. If you have made it to the end of the video, please leave me a red heart from or a kiss or both in the comments down below. Please make sure you are subscribed and that you have turned the notifications on 
follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok, because on TikTok I'm doing lots of get ready with me, so with my fashion choices, it's kind of like kind of turning into my like fashion-y channel. And I will see you soon. And if you're in the middle, stick with it. You are worth it. As my friend Becca, the wonderful Becca Sattle said, what if this time you didn't quit? What if you didn't quit? What if you got to good, got to great, got to being the best that you could ever be and you got to live your life free, never having to lose weight again? It's possible and you can do it. Bye guys.